big challenge for satellite developers is packing more and more bits into the available spectrum and achieving faster throughput, which means dealing with more and more complex modulations that are difficult to understand and troubleshoot, unless they are demodulated using a vector signal analysis tool. Hi, I'm Paris Akshi, the Product Marketing Manager for Signal Analyzers at Keysight Technologies. So in this video today, I want to show you how you can easily perform digital demodulation analysis using our Pathway VSA software, which runs 40% faster than previous generation of signal analyzers, thanks to the new CPU we are using in this unit. Now you can easily run the application either directly through your signal analyzer, or you could easily download the free trial version without a need to equipment. Now let me show you how you can use the VSA software for your digital demodulation analysis. Okay, so this is my signal here. If I go to the measurement setup and from there to the measurement type, if I go to general purpose, I can pick the custom IQ. And for the purpose of today, I'm actually going to show you more panels. So I'll choose the grid two by three so we can look at six panels here. Now this signal is the QAM signal with a 24 point constellation format. Starting from the top left, I have the IQ measure time, which basically shows the data results of digital demodulation for the measured input signal. So the digital demodulator typically produces two signals, IQ measured and IQ reference. Now the quality of the input signal can be analyzed by comparing the IQ measured with the reference so that we can get signal quality information such as IQ and constellation diagrams, which basically give you great information regarding the impairments in your system. Now specifically, when you combine the results of here with your EVM measurement, critical information can be obtained to source and troubleshoot your issues and optimize your signal quality in general. Now moving to the next one, the raw main time. This one shows you the raw data read from your input hardware or the playback file. And it's typically used for, for example, when channel or IF magnitude or magnitude trigger types are, um, are used in your system. And the input hardware, uh, hardware basically detects that trigger. So uh, the raw main time can give you a better indication of what is basically causing that trigger in the system. Next one here is the error vector spectrum. So this one shows you the spectrum of your error vector time trees, which I will discuss shortly. Moving to the one at the bottom on the left, this is the spectrum. That's basically the average instantaneous spectrum display. And it's great for visual monitoring just to make sure everything is in the right place. Now, if something unexpected shows up on your spectrum, you can capture the source right away from here. The next one, which I will spend more time on for today, is the symbols and errors table. This has two sections. The upper section here basically shows you the error information and the lower section here shows you um, information about the binary bits for each symbol. Now, when, um, as you can see here, you can easily find the EVM information on this table here, which is ideal um, metric to detect and minimize your modulation impairments and achieve signal qualities close to your theoretical optimum result. This is very important in today's satellites, for example, which need continuous identification and diagnosis of the impairments that are added in the system. Magnitude error in this table is an indicator of the quality of the amplitude component of the modulated signal. For example, a very high magnitude error is an indication of high incidental amplitude modulation on your signal. The phase error information is the phase difference between the IQ reference signal and the IQ measure signal and is an indicator of the quality of the phase component of your modulated signal. Frequency error shows the carrier's frequency error relative to the VSA center frequency. So for example, errors in the R frequency, LO frequency, or digitizer clock rate can all appear as a carrier frequency error here. IQ offset shows you the magnitude of the carrier feature signal and is easily seen in your constellation diagram. 
So when there is no carrier feed-through, the X, which is the center of the constellation diagram, is at the origin. So that means that your IQ of set is zero. But when X is not at the origin, the IQ of set is the magnitude of the vector between your X and the origin. Next one is um, the quadrature skew error. This one basically shows you the orthogonal error between the I and Q signals, uh, which under ideal situations should be typically 90 degrees. All right, so now lastly, let's talk a little bit about the error vector time. This one here shows you the error vectors between the corresponding symbol points in the IQ measured and IQ reference signals. So this visually can be very useful. For example, if your error vector time shows regions of large errors, this is a sign of distortion or a poor signal to the noise ratio. Or it could also be a sign of large frequency errors, which means that you need to adjust your center frequency. Or it could also be a sign of large IQ of sets, which basically means that you need to reduce your LO feature. So if you're excited to try your own digital demodulation analysis, go ahead and download the free trial version today and enjoy the speed, the accuracy, and the comfort that this software will bring to your life. Thank you for watching.